Ever wondered how to make your money work for you? Picture this. Instead of tirelessly laboring for every penny, your money is out there, working, earning, growing. That's the beauty of investing. It's more than just stashing cash away. It's about generating income, creating financial growth. Investing is like a seed. It needs time to grow and flourish. It's a crucial step towards achieving financial freedom and stability. So, are you ready to dive into the world of investing? Stay tuned! Before we jump into the how, let's understand what investing actually is. Investing, dear friends, is like planting a seed today to reap fruits tomorrow. It's about putting your money to work, committing it to a venture, a project, or an idea, with the anticipation that, over time, you'll receive more money in return. This could be in the form of income generated by the investment, or it could be that the value of your investment increases, giving you the option to sell at a profit. It's not about instant gratification, but about nurturing your resources, giving them time to grow and flourish. Investing isn't about making a quick buck. It's not a lottery ticket or a race to the finish line. It's strategic, it's deliberate. You need to understand the rules of the game, have patience and keep your eye on the prize. Remember, investing is not gambling. It's a strategic game of patience and knowledge. Now that you know what investing is, it's time to talk about the why. Why should you invest? Well, it all boils down to achieving your financial goals. These are the milestones you set for yourself to guide your financial decisions and actions. Think of these goals as your financial roadmap. They might include saving for retirement, buying a house, or funding your child's education. By investing, you're not just saving your money you're growing it. You're building a financial safety net for your future and creating opportunities for financial freedom. Imagine being able to retire comfortably, knowing you've got a nest egg to rely on. Picture owning your dream home, not just dreaming about it. See your child graduate without the burden of student loans. These are the kinds of goals investing can help you achieve. Remember, your financial goals are the driving force behind your investing journey. Are you finding this information useful? If so, show some love by hitting the like button. Sharing is caring, so don't hesitate to spread the word. For more insightful content just like this, subscribe to our channel. All right, you understand what investing is and why it's important. But where should you invest your money? The answer isn't one size fits all, and it largely depends on your financial goals and risk tolerance. Let's talk about some options. First, we have stocks. Purchasing stocks means buying a little piece of a company. It's like being a partial owner. When the company does well, your stock value increases, and you make a profit when you sell. However, if the company doesn't do well, the value of your stock might decrease. Next, we have bonds. When you buy a bond, you're essentially lending your money to an entity, like a corporation or government. They promise to pay you back with a certain interest over a specific period. Bonds are generally considered safer than stocks, but the potential for returns is also lower. Then there's mutual funds. A mutual fund gathers money from many investors and uses it to buy a diverse mix of stocks, bonds, or other assets. It's a way to get a diverse portfolio without having to buy each asset individually. And let's not forget about real estate. Investing in properties can provide steady cash flow if you rent them out or a big payout if you sell for a higher price later. But remember, real estate requires more hands-on management than some other investment types. There are also other options like index funds, retirement accounts, and more. Each of these investment options has its own set of risks and rewards. What's most important is that you choose the ones that align with your financial goals and risk tolerance. The key is to diversify your portfolio. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. By spreading your investments across various assets, you can balance the risk and potentially increase your chances of a profitable return. Remember, investing isn't about getting rich quick, it's about building wealth over time. And the best way to do that is by making well-informed, diversified investments. Investing does come with its share of risks. Let's talk about that. When we dive into the world of investing, we're not just swimming in a pool of potential profits. We're also navigating through a sea of risks. Risks in the investing world are the chances you take that could lead to financial losses. It's like a seesaw. On one end, we have the potential for high returns. That's the exciting part, the part that gets our adrenaline pumping. But on the other end, 
we have the potential for losses, which is the part that can cause some sleepless nights. And here's the kicker. The two ends of the seesaw are inextricably linked. The higher the potential for returns, the higher the risk. The lower the risk, the lower the potential returns. It's a delicate balance and one that requires a clear understanding of your own risk tolerance. Risk tolerance is the amount of risk you're comfortable taking on. It's influenced by a variety of factors, including your financial situation, your investment goals, and your personality. Are you a risk taker, ready to ride the waves of the stock market? Or are you more conservative, preferring the slow and steady pace of bonds? Knowing your risk tolerance can help guide your investment decisions. It can help you build a portfolio that aligns with your comfort level and your financial goals. Remember, higher the risk, higher the potential returns, but also higher the potential losses. Scene script. Ready to start investing? Let's go over the steps. First things first, you'll need to open an investment account. This is like your regular bank account, but it's designed to hold investments like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. There are different types of investment accounts, but for beginners, a regular brokerage account will do just fine. This account allows you to buy and sell multiple types of investments and comes with no restrictions on when you can access your money. Now, on to the fun part, choosing your investments. This is where your financial goals and risk tolerance come into play. If you're saving for a short-term goal, you might want to choose safer investments like bonds or money market funds. If you're investing for the long haul, you can afford to take on a bit more risk with investments like stocks or mutual funds. The key here is to diversify your portfolio by spreading your money across different types of investments. This way, if one investment doesn't perform well, you'll have others to fall back on. So you've got your account and your investments, what's next? Well, investing isn't a set it and forget it kind of thing. You need to monitor your portfolio regularly. This doesn't mean you need to check it every day, but you should review it at least once a quarter. This allows you to see how your investments are performing and make adjustments if needed. Remember, investing isn't about getting rich quick, it's about growing your wealth over time. So don't be discouraged if you don't see big returns right away. Keep your eye on the long term and stay the course. Lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help. There are plenty of resources out there from books to online courses that can provide valuable investing advice or you could consider working with a financial advisor who can guide you through the process. And there you have it, your step-by-step -step guide to start investing. Well, that was a lot to take in, wasn't it? Let's go over the key points. Today, we've been on a journey exploring the realm of investing. We started by understanding what investing is, a process of allocating resources, usually money, in the expectation of generating an income or profit. It's not just about making your money work for you, it's about setting yourself up for a brighter future. We then discovered the importance of financial goals. Whether it's buying a new car, putting a down payment on a house, or saving for retirement, these goals give direction to our investment journey. They help us decide where to invest, which brings us to our next point. Deciding where to invest is crucial. From stocks and bonds to real estate and mutual funds, each investment avenue has its own set of benefits and risks which leads us to the role of risk in investing. Understanding and managing risk is an integral part of the investment journey. Finally, we delved into how to start investing. It's not about jumping in head first, rather. It's about starting small, doing your research, and making informed decisions. And with that, we conclude our investing guide for beginners. Remember, investing is a journey. Start small, learn along the way, and watch your wealth grow.